Welcome to another episode of Two Old Geeks Talking. Now on the World Wide Web. Hey, welcome to Two Old Geeks Talking. I'm Rob. I'm Trace. And you want to introduce our special guest? Oh, this is our father, Morris. And today we're talking about Jeremiah Johnson. So you might ask. And then you might not, I don't know. But you might ask, uh, why are we talking about Jeremiah Johnson when that's, you know, we talk about geeky stuff, but Jeremiah Johnson isn't geeky. Well, the reason we're doing it is why? Because it's his movie. Yeah, it's her father's favorite movie. The movie we was raised with. Yeah, yeah. How many times do you think you've seen it? Oh, probably about 20 times. 20 times? I've probably seen it I've close. Seen, I've seen it twice. You've seen it twice? I've probably seen it eh, probably half a dozen times. I recently rewatched it. In preparation for this. So do you remember, uh, well, first of all, Jeremiah Johnson came out in 1972. The movie with Robert Redford. If you don't know, you should. And uh, it was directed by Sidney Pollack and had Will, Will Greer in it and uh, as Bear Claw. And uh, do you remember the first place you saw that? Did you see it at the theater or did you see it on TV? I saw it uh, at the theater. At the theater? It come out, and let's see, in 72, I was uh, four, five, six years old. So you had been three years old. Okay. So you probably didn't see it at the theater, did you? No. <laughs> but anyway, it come out a few years later on ABC. It was one of the largest uh, uh, ABC movies to come out as far as uh, viewership and things like that. And uh, why is it your favorite movie? Well... To say your favorite movie, you got to have some kind of foundation to build up the movie, at least I have. Yeah. And uh, when I was uh, just a little boy, I remember talking to my granddaddy, and he, you know, most adults ask kids, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said, well, Papa, I want to be a mountain man. And he said, well, you know, that'd be great. I said, you'd be dead now. <laughs> and... and uh, so as, as time as time went on, uh, of course he taught me how to set snares and uh, traps and things like that. And my uncles taught me. I think I shot my first squirrel when I was eight years old. And so I was always out in the woods. I always enjoyed the woods. And then when I was somewhere around fifteen, I wanted to buy a mountain, and there was one for sale. And uh, eastern part of the state is a uh, thousand acres 50, 50 cents an acre and i went and asked my dad i said dad can i can i buy that mountain well you know five hundred dollars was a whole lot of money when you're making forty dollars a week so so he said that's the stupidest thing i ever heard son he said you couldn't get a horse to stand on it let alone plow <laughs> and uh, so that idea went by and uh and after that, I've always hunted and fished, spent a lot of times in, in the mountain, grouse hunting, and just, that was just part of the way I felt. You know, I run my trap lines uh, uh, when I was young. My oldest sister, Carolyn, helped me run my trap lines, and I'd get possums and skin them out and sell them for 10 cents a hide, and that's what I bought your mother's wedding rings with <laughs> with possibly so, right. so paid cool. off worked out <laughs> there you go. so uh then this movie come along and and it it really impressed me and a lot of people because it was sort of a manly movie and it was a hard time because it was during the vietnam war and uh there was a lot of people wanted to escape and, and get away from things and get away from civilization and and the pressures of it and uh and so, you know, it, it was a pretty good hit for all the young guys back then. Yeah. When you think about Mountain Man movies, I mean, there's only just a few. I mean, I can think of Jeremiah Johnson. Have you ever heard of that? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there's Mountain Man, and then there was The Revenant with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Right. The big banger. But, I mean, uh, uh, the movie, like I said, still holds up today. I just recently rewatched it. And uh, it's a story of, uh, the movie is based on a real life character, which we'll talk here about here in a minute. But uh, the movie follows Jeremiah Johnson, where he's getting out away from uh, civilization. He's going up into the mountains. 
And you get the sense he's running from something or trying to get away from something. Well, he just movie. got back from war, though, right? Yeah, but it doesn't really go into too much detail in the movie about yeah. that. But the real-life character, yeah. So so uh, uh, he goes up in the mountains, and he's trying to get started, and, and uh, he runs into Bear Claw, who kind of takes him underneath his wing, and uh, he calls him uh, Pilgrim and all the way through the movie. Right. And uh, you know what Pilgrim means? What the meaning of Pilgrim is? No. It's uh, uh, somebody that, that's on a journey to a sacred place is, oh. is what's, what's a Pilgrim <coughs> is. So anyway, he called, him, he called him Pilgrim. He kind of took him underneath his wing. And, and uh, of course, they had that real famous scene about him uh, teaching him how to skin a grizzly bear. Right. But from the beginning of the movie to the end of the movie, he goes through this big transformation to where at the beginning he doesn't know anything, and then he finally he finally gets skilled. And uh, uh, of course, he finds him a wife in the movie, and she's killed. Yeah, he marries him. Uh, he really found her. He was kind of forced upon her. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In the yeah. movie, in the movie, yeah, in the movie. And so, like I said, the movie's loosely based on history, but we'll talk about the history here in a little minute. And so in the movie, he goes away to help some people, and he comes back, and his, his uh, wife and adoptive son had been killed by some Crow Indians, and, and he goes on a, uh, uh, a hunt for these Crow so Indians. why didn't the Crow... See, I, I, I looked into it, because there's a couple things about this movie that made me kind of question, you know, why didn't the Crows come in a group yeah. after him instead of, like, one at a time, but they didn't consider, you know, even though they... Back then, they were considered savages. They actually had honor, and it wasn't honorable for them to attack him in a group. So they would do it one at a time. They it wouldn't. It was, you know, their strength was as big as their enemy. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and a lot of a lot of cultures that how strong your enemy was showed how strong you was. Right. So if you had a strong enemy, then that kind of brought the whole the whole group up. So. Uh, uh, I like Native American history and stuff, and so, so the the Crow Indians they they were always known as the warriors, and before you know the first settlers came over to this country, Crow Indians you know they had enemies of all the other Indian tribes. Right. So it's not like uh, the white man came over here and and we started fighting. Uh, they were already fighting among themselves, and so. The Crow was constantly having to patrol their borders to keep other tribes out, to keep from taking their land, and so they were constantly fighting. So uh, I seen a documentary and it had a Crow, uh, current, current uh, somebody from the Indian reservation where the Crow were at, and they said, you know, when the white man came over, when the white settler came over, he said, what they did is we'd become their scouts. And he said, a lot of people. A lot of Indian tribes still hate the crow because of that. Uh, but the reality was, he said, what we did is we turned them against our enemies. He was like, oh, you, you, you want some Indians? There's some over there. <laughs> oh, you need some more? There, there's some over there. And so he said, we wiped out our enemies. And he said, if you look, he said, with our treaty with the federal government, it's better than all the other treaties. And he said, we're the only Indian tribe that still have our original land. Or we else got moved to a reservation somewhere else. But... Their reservation is actually where their original land was. So, so, uh, and he went on to say, he said, you know, we're the best fighters, we're the be we, we're the best, lo we look the best, and we're the best lovers, and that's why all the other Indian tribes are jealous of us. But uh, uh, it, in the movie, you know, I mean, there's hardly any dialogue at all. And uh, so, I mean, if you if you went by that script, you could probably print it out on a couple of post-it notes. Right. There's not a ton of dialogue, but the thing about it was, it was, it was the way it was shot, and it was so beautiful, and originally they wanted to do it on back lot, yeah. and, uh, uh, but they ended up doing uh, the most of it on uh, Robert Redford's farm out in Utah. Huh. So. Well, here's, and that brings up another question, because at one time, they had thought about actually giving the part to uh, Clint Eastwood. Yeah. So where would they have recorded it then if they would didn't have Robert Redford's backlot? Well, see, they they would have had to do it on they would have had to do it on backlot. They couldn't have done it on Robert Redford's land. But the thing is, is uh, Clint Eastwood wasn't interested because of the first director that was tied in with it. I don't think he would have done along. a good job. I don't know about you, but I mean Robert Redford. You know how you were in our Viking episode. You talked about how the guy that played Ragnar could really express a lot through his looks. Yeah, yeah. Without saying anything. Yeah. I think Robert Redford did just as good a job. I mean, he could, 
express so much without even opening his mouth. So I don't think Clint Eastwood would have been able to do as well as Robert did. Well, whoever did the casting for the movie did a fantastic job anyway, because all the characters I thought did a good job. The the woman that played uh, Swan, uh, Robert Redford's wife, mm -hmm. uh, that was her first major film, and she never did another film after that. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, but yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, was, right there, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. But they, but uh, they did the movie on four million dollars, which I mean that's a lot of money to you and me. But consider, but, but as far as movie budgets, even in 1972, that was small. And Sidney Pollack even had to uh, get a second mortgage on his place because they went over budget to pay for everything. But the film ended up making 44 million, and uh, was the seventh highest rated movie back in 72. So, uh, uh, what was your favorite scene in all of the movie? Well, there's, there's several of them. You could start out, you could, you could see the way he was dressed, that he was probably in the Navy, you know, with his jacket and, and, uh, and his cap and everything. And you can tell uh, later on in the movie where that he left before the war had ended. Because he said, you know, how did who won the war? He didn't know who uh -huh. had won it, and and you can see a lot of life lessons in there because he left troubles, and but he traded them troubles for more troubles. The, you know, different just, types, just different type of right. troubles, and uh, so and you could tell that he had a, a good heart, but in the movie, I said in yeah. the movie, and maybe not in real life, but in the movie because that uh, he when the crazy woman. Uh, had the kid, he actually took the kid and took care of him and uh, and he actually was good to Swan after he uh, was forced into marrying her and uh, and he he got to the point where they wasn't supposed to go through the graveyard and and he so he had respect there but then <clears throat> but then he went on he had a good heart to go on and when the guy persuaded him to them people was freezing to death down there in the valley that uh, he went after them and uh, but I like also the way that when he come back and he was coming back through the graveyard they uh, uh, remember old Will Smith uh, Bearclaw told him said the, the mountains will speak to you mm -hmm. you know they'll talk to you and and you can find peace in it. I, I, if any of you ever been out in the mountains and walked around, there's a sort of a peace, peacefulness. And uh, and he uh, uh, so I think the mountains spoke to him as he was coming through there, telling him more or less there was trouble or something going on. And he took off towards his wife and kid. A little tidbit. Uh, do you know the girl that was in the root cellar? Where he, he opens up and he finds a bunch of kids in the root cellar. You know who that was in real life? Yeah. Who? Uh, it was uh, Tanya Tucker. Yeah, Tanya Tucker, the, huh. the singer. Yeah. Her, her parents lived right next to Robert Redford's farm where they were filming it, and she wanted to be in a movie, so he just stuck her in that root cellar. So that, was, <laughs> that was nice. Of him, wasn't it? Yeah. Get in there. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but yeah, as far as uh, the guy that wrote it was John Milam, but, but uh, uh, Sidney Pollack, he did a lot of changes to the movie. Because John Milam, he wrote, and you know this, Robert, Conan the Barbarian. Right. You're familiar with that, Apocalypse Now. So his original movie, he was cutting livers out and eating them, and blood was running down his face. And it would have been a totally different movie if John had ended up right. uh, taking care of it. So but, I got a question. Maybe yeah. you got an answer to it. So the movie runs 116 minutes, right? I guess. So how come they had that... What is that called? Interlog or intermission? Intermission part in it. That's a that's like old school cinema. It used yeah, so you could like stop and go get popcorn or something. Yeah, or yeah. Something. I mean, go take a pee. I mean, <laughs> I mean seriously, we're we're used to movies running three hours long. Yeah, but that's not that's no 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 no. But back long. in the day, back in the day, people. People were hard working. They couldn't sit still for 116 minutes. I mean, oh, you had to let them get there up. There were so many other movies out in the 72 that didn't have that. I don't well, know why they threw that in there. I'd sit I there know. and we'd be like, oh. Yeah, I did uh, think it was a little odd, but I mean, I can remember being a kid and going to movies and you'd have the intermission. I can understand that if you were in a drive-thru or something, yeah. but yeah. 
sitting in the theater. I don't get it. I don't know. You ought to talk to Sidney Pollock about uh, that. Sidney? But, <laughs> but as far as the real life guy, uh, his name wasn't Jeremiah Johnson. His name was John Jeremiah Johnston was his name. And he'd done all sorts of jobs. He'd been a woodcutter and he'd panned for gold and he'd been in the Mexican-American War. And I mean, he'd been... He'd been, uh, uh, he'd hit his uh, uh, commanding officer and, and uh, he was a well fisherman for a, for a long time. So he was kind of a guy like our little brother, Matthew, where he's just had a lot of different jobs over right. the years. And so uh, uh, he just was trying to get away from everything. And when he went up into the mountains and started trapping, he was trapping around Utah area and he didn't meet Bear Claw. And uh, the real story with the grizzly bear was that Bear Claw had wounded a grizzly bear with a shot, and it was coming after Jeremiah Johnson. He shot and missed, and so he stabbed it. So he changed his name to Jeremiah Johnston once he, once he, once he uh, uh, went up into the mountains. And that was back in the day where if you wanted to change your identity, all you really had to do was just go to another town and change your name. Right. And... Uh, uh, but they used to, his nickname was John Liver Eating Johnston. Yeah. Because he said he would cut the livers out of his, each crow. Yeah. Now, so he, he did meet Bear Claw. Not just cut them out, but cut them out and eat them. Yeah, he did meet Bear Claw, and he did marry an uh, Indian named Swan, and she was a flathead Indian. You know what's so great about flathead Indians? You can sit a bear on top yeah, of Yeah, you can sit, sit a drink up there while you, while you give him a kiss. <laughs> That's a bad joke. Yeah, yeah, I was bad. I can't believe you said that, Robert. <laughs> you might cut that out. Probably not. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, can't take a joke, shouldn't watch this channel. So so anyway, but he wasn't going to do some, um, he wasn't trying to help some settlers or doing anything other than what he'd usually done when she got killed. He was just out trapping. And the crows killed her. You know, she was killed by other Native Americans just because, just because. Uh, actually, actually, he did, in the movie, he burnt the cabin down. But that's not in real. They burnt the cabin down. Yeah. And uh, and in the army, uh, the reason it didn't really show it, he really went AWOL the first time, and and the real John went AWOL, and then uh, and then after all this, all of everything said and done, and he went on his killing spree, and I think. I think they said he killed something like 700, I mean 300 yeah, Indians, yeah, 300 yeah. Indians, but he killed them in any way he could if he poisoned them or whatever. And then uh, uh, and then he ended up going back in, I'm thinking it's the Civil War, Yeah. and Civil ended War. up being a hero, yeah. and then come out and become a sheriff. Right. And that's why I think the, I think the live, he denied the, li you know, when his wife was killed, he went on a big rampage against Crow Indians. And like like Dad said, I mean, he, he, you know, in the movie they wrote, in the movie what Sidney Pollack did is he had the Indians come to him. It may look like a self-defense situation. Right. But in real life, he was just killing them every place he could find them. And so uh, at one point, one of the Crow chiefs made peace with him. And so he stopped his killing spree, and he actually went on to... Uh, appreciate the Crow Indians at some point later in life, but he did not. He denied in his older age that he ever ate the livers. But if you're trying to get a job as a lawman, you probably want to kind of. If you ever had any cannibalism in your past, <laughs> you probably want to kind of want to shy away you from. Don't it. Even yeah, yeah, you, you probably. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even put that. I wouldn't even put that on my resume if I was going in for a job. Yeah, I used to eat people, but well, you know, they, they also I, said that he told. Tall Tales, he joined that Wild West show. Mm -hmm. He joined that Wild West show, and, and he liked to talk about himself and tell tales, you know. Oh, so yeah. some of them tales may be true. Some of them might not be true. But, but as far as, I don't know which would make the best movie, <laughs> Jeremiah Johnson or the real Jeremiah. <laughs> right. Or John yeah, Johnson. Right, right, yeah. right. I mean, that was an right. life. But it, the movie still holds up today. Yeah. still the best mountain man movie out there. So what was it? What was that actor's name that was buried up to his neck? Not the actor, but the character's name that was buried up to his neck on his horse. Dale Jew. Dale Jew. Is that, Dale uh, see, he was my favorite character. Yeah, yeah. You know, you would think it would have been Johnson or Bear Claw. Just because he's bald, right? Yeah, because he's, ba <laughs> he's bald. No, 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 not because he's bald. I didn't. I haven't always been bald. It was sort of a comedian part of the show. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, 
I I'm like, a fine horse in under me. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, is anybody pass there? Well, nobody's passing in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got a hat and Shay's getting scared. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was, who was it that buried him out right there? Do you remember? Yeah, some some Indians, but it didn't yeah. say what. I don't guess well, it says who. I don't know what you just wrote on that piece of paper, but it, but but uh, anyway, uh, uh, the Jeremiah Johnson is still popular today. In fact, the brand new True Western uh, magazine actually had an article about Mountain Men and Jeremiah Johnson the movie. It just came out recently, so it's still in the public eye. And uh, uh, there's actually a Jeremiah Johnson comic. It it. But you're not going to find it here in America. It was uh, uh, released over in France. That's probably why it's written in French. Oh, okay. Yeah. I got just figured that out. <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, but anyway uh, the art is fantastic, and I hope at some point uh, one of these comic book companies uh, get the rights to it translate it over into English. And uh, uh, so you want to present that? Sure. So whenever we have a guest on our two old geeks, uh, show we always give them a two old geeks t-shirt and this is yours thank you you get to <clears throat> wear it in pride and say look what my silly boys do and we also uh me and him since they're retired me and dad we we built a hawking 50 caliber gun and then we got a kit put it together ourselves and uh, we'll be shooting it at the end of this video. And if all goes well, we made a Hawking 50 caliber gun. <laughs> if it, if it goes wrong, we made a pipe bomb. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, so stay tuned. <laughs> so anyway, all right, let's go shoot that gun. All right. Okay, we made this here Hawking rifle, which if you're familiar with Jeremiah Johnson, that was the, the rifle he really, really wanted. Hawking rifle was made back in the 1820s by two brothers, Hawking brothers. That makes sense, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, sometimes it's called Plains rifle. Uh, 50 caliber was real popular. Um, they made them up to about 1900 when they stopped. And uh, so uh, uh, they also had up to a .63 or a 63 caliber. And uh, she was about 400 yards. I've never shot a black powder rifle. Have you ever shot a black powder rifle? Never shot one. You ever shot one? Never well, loaded one. I never made one for too. You ever made one? <laughs> right. never made one? I think since me and Dad made it, Robert should shoot it, right? And we, me and you, could stand way over there yeah. um, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and get an encouragement. Yeah, there you go. We, we'll hold you. We'll hold your hat. <laughs> right. So uh, uh, best I remember, it's uh, uh, patch powder and ball, or don't shoot at all. <laughs> so let's do it, boys. <laughs> You want to shoot it first? No, I'll, I'll shoot it first. All right, stick the patch down in there. Sometimes that, that's that, like ramrod, tired, that ramrod oh, jams sometimes. There you go. Brand new. Let's see. Help I may have to line up some here. Nah, that's good. You want it tight. You don't want it to fall out while you're out in the field. That's right. You gonna okay. load? You gonna load the turf pour the powder in it? Patch. You got patch? Oh yeah, I got a patch right there. It's powder patch ball. Powder patch ball. All right, so we got one patch. Oh no, we got two patches. Three it's patches. Good. Three patches. Lay As you can tell, we are professionals. Don't do this at home. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your kids in the house. Yeah. Some powder. Let's patch first. Mm-hmm. Powder, patch, scooter ball. Uh oh, got two patches yeah, there. Two patches. Patches are expensive. We got to save money. That's right. 2023. We can't Tight. afford to put two patches in. Right? Tight fit. And keep that. Got on way, son. I can't push that down in there. Here, Put some more weight on it. Yeah, hold that. Ain't supposed to hit it with your hand. 
I hope a bear don't attack us. We'd be dead by now. Well, would, you, would you hate to be running? Yeah, you had some. They said old Daniel Boone, he had a hawking too. They said he could run and load at the same uh, time. I see. Did you run that down in there? I run it down there as far as it go. Okay. Stick in my pocket. I still don't seem far enough. Uh, that's good enough. That's good enough because you got the ball in there and patch. You ain't going to go all the way down. Trust me, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. Who's going to shoot it first? Huh? Never. There you go. Well, that's a sweet. You know what that sound is? That's the sound of freedom. <laughs> <laughs> you stop it. Don't you set that trigger? Boy, that's like. <laughs> well, I reckon that's it for Jeremiah Johnson, right? I got, I got my nose, my eyes, and my ears, so I, I consider that a win. <laughs> Are you done? I'm done. You I'm done. done. All right, I think All I'm right. done.